Fantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wish my shit did that. <laughs> it got a nice echo to it. Yeah. Some good feedback, some good feedback. Discovering echoes as a kid was probably like my first experience with like really cooning. Now that I think about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. We used to do that at um there was a uh a theme park in Pittsburgh uh called Kennywood and like pretty much every roller coaster had like a tunnel and so it was always going to the tunnel and scream penis as loud as you can. Uh so you get that nice echo while going, you know. Uh, 50 miles an hour or whatever it was. Um, hooray. Podcasting friendship. <laughs> Love it. Hangovers. All right, uh, we're from, uh, we're at uh, Poddexa, right? Pod eczema. Pod eczema. <laughs> This is the Let's Unpack That Podcast. I'm your host, Lyle Behrens, recording live in downtown Los Angeles on this fine Saturday at the Pod Exa Studios. And we got Matt Duckett back. What's going on, man? Yo, happy to be back. Happy to be 20 minutes away from my apartment. <laughs> I know. It's, instead of, well, we used to do it like, in the apartment. We'd be like on the internet. But. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good to be in person, though. It's nice to not have a delay. It's nice to be able to know that I can go on my phone and look something up without the entire <laughs> oh yeah 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 because because yeah we had that problem Thank God, yeah anyway man so so uh what did you what did you get into last night last night um yeah so i went to a concert uh, i saw hall and oats at the hollywood bowl uh which was great for the hall and oats component um they rocked it uh the opening act was just god awful it was this band called squeeze um they were like a big Brit pop band in the 80s and 90s and it's one of those things where like you know to be like a rock musician and to like put on a good show you have to like have some sort of edge about you like you have to at least give off the effect that you might punch someone in the face if you get too <laughs> upset you know what I mean and these guys were just like clearly too nice of people to be good live acts yeah like it felt like I was watching my friend's dad's concert <laughs> Like they just brought us into the basement and we're like, hey, George is going to play guitar for us. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God, I want to go upstairs and play video games instead. Dad bands are funny because it's like a, it, it's a lot of denim and it's mm. like and then you see like little mini kind of like groupy older women. I don't want to yeah. say groupies, but they're like, oh, we're out. Oh, he's playing guitar. And it's fun mm -hmm. seeing like the wives there because mm -hmm. some of them are like, that's my man. Or like, right. I'm just glad he's out the house. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. One or the other. I, either way, people are relieved. But um, yeah, they were they were really awful. Um, but then Hollow Notes came out. And like the thing with Hollow Notes is they're they're from Philadelphia. And there's just like there's a certain uh, cloth. Like I'm just <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> there's a certain there's a certain way that uh there's a certain type of white person that philadelphia produces uh i i always say that um i always say that in philly it's not people in philadelphia don't see color because they see red all the time because they're such an angry city <laughs> so even at in their mid 70s these guys came out like kind of like yeah, we'll get mad if something goes wrong, which did. Uh, uh, Daryl Hall lost his monitors at one point and was, like, freaking out uh, at the tech people. But they were great. I mean, like, I, I, I'm a big Hall & Oates fan just in general, but, like, even to, like, the layperson, if you went to the concert, it's like, oh, shit, they just did 15 straight top 40 hits that, like, everybody knows but might not know that it's them, you know what I mean? So they, they crushed it. It was great. It was super fun. It's only a few artists that can do that. We're like, oh, hit, hit, like Drake, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I, I, who, you really, you could maybe count on one or two, on like maybe two hands, the amount of 75-year-olds who can fill out a 20,000-seater, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. And then the ones where like, all right, let's bring this person back to life. Mm -hmm. And then, and not back to life as in like, oh, I'll well, see them. You brought something back to life. But like, if Bob Marley was like, 
live longer. Would he be able to? Oh yeah, I think so for sure. Yeah, I think he. I think that's the exact lane that he would be in. Yeah, he wouldn't be selling out, you know, the Rose Bowl or some shit. But yeah, I think he, I think he'd be a solid. I think he'd be a solid twenty thousand okay. seat act. You know what I mean? I'm curious because certain artists, I'm like, I'm like they they grow in death, and I'm just kind. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't around when it happened, so I'm like, hey, what, what would this look like? Then? You know? Yeah, there's definitely a mythos to Bob. Mar- you know. Uh, uh, death is a career move, especially in the music industry. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think he would have. I think he would have persisted, unless he just came out with some whack shit, you know, yeah. that, which is always a possibility. But nobody really, I feel like, like when you're like at a certain like legendary status, like nobody really cared. It's just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, God, how many albums did Prince come out with? Yeah. With, after after like '95, that were just like, what the fuck are we listening to? <laughs> and do and it's still when he showed up, he was still Prince. He was. Uh, he couldn't ruin his own reputation with his bad music <laughs> late in his life. So last night, as a newly single man, it's very important. I go out a lot, even when I don't. Because, like, after the pandemic, like, I like I like being at home and chilling. Like, I just want to mm-hmm. do my stand-up, do this right here, and then fucking get a workout in, go out to eat, and then don't bother me. I'm in the house. Right. I'm not trying to see you niggas. Yeah, but. feel you. It's like I got like you gotta force yourself to like nah man you gotta get uncomfortable it's uncomfortable you gotta be out you can't ruminate and keep doing the post mortem on the relationship in your head like you gotta go out and live. So we're out. Ill is DJing, spinning at the spot in uh, downtown LA, and I'm like doing the thing where like I'm standing next to the DJ booth because like. <laughs> I don't know why niggas like doing that. But it's, it's like we like it's like I don't know. It's, it's like a pseudo VIP thing. Like right. I know the DJ. Like, <laughs> it's very true. Yep. Yeah. People want to be close to the DJ, or like there is this club in, um, or the, it's really more of a bar with a dance floor in SF called Vertigo, um, and like they have like benches along the side of the dance floor and as the night gets more packed people stand up on the benches and that is like the vip room of that bar it's like yeah we're standing up on the benches so everyone sees us dancing bad i hate bay area night (laughs) it's truly 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 a sin so we're out there he's djing and, and there's uh these two women these older White women, you know, everybody deserves to have a good time. But this is one, and she keeps turning around. She's she's like, "What's your name?" And then like, Illa, DJ Illinois, being the smart man that he was, he didn't give he didn't give her his DJ name. He just said, "I'm Raphael," because it's like, do I really need a 47 year old white woman calling me Illa? Because you know that she's gonna get keep putting an inflection on it. The more drunk Ella! she gets, yeah, she's gonna uh, do yep. some shit with her hands. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So then she's like, she's like talking. She's like loud. She's like just keeps telling me how handsome I am. I'm like, thank, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And like, like a, in like a sexual way, or just in a like mom letting you know that a little both. Okay. Yeah, it was like it was like this. You are so and how do you? I'm like I'm 31. She's like. Oh my God! Like you were, you were so young. You were so young for me, and I'm like, I'm not trying to fuck you. <laughs> and she's like, my, you, my, my youngest brother is older than you. And I'm like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then she's mm-hmm. like, and it was like really annoying because she was like, she was like doing this dialogue with me that I mm-hmm. wasn't part of. She was like, yeah. oh my God, but you want like a young girl, right? You want mm-hmm. a young, you want like some young hot thing. And I'm like, I'm not even saying, like what the fuck is happening <laughs> right now? And she's like, oh, I so would, but oh, I'm married. Oh, but I I so would. Oh, I definitely fuck you. I'm like, one, I'm not trying. Two, how you gonna reject me when I'm not trying? Like, Yeah, yeah, some, fucking... some Jedi mind tricks. Do you think that she could tell that you were recently sing- single and that was her way of like letting you know that things are, will turn out fine and that you could still smash. In like a kind of like weird mother way. Yeah, exactly. Cause yeah, it, so- kinda, it sounded yeah, motherly yeah. to me. And I, and I brought it up cause it's, it's like, when you go through a bad breakup, you kind of got to like tell everybody like, hey, be easy with me. Yeah. It's a difficult time. <laughs> it's a difficult time. So I had that conversation. So like that conversation is happening and she keep, and like, I think like what bothered me so much is I found out she lives in Portland and I really fucking hate Portland as a city. Yeah, sure. It's it's like a it's like if a, a, a hairy leg on a woman with cigarette burns was a city. Like it's very 
fucking disgusting. <laughs> um, I hate that you said that while I was trying to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was almost a mess in the studio, but continue. Oh, I would have loved if I got a spit take on camera. <laughs> I don't want to ruin the equipment. <laughs> Those are two pauses back to back right there. <laughs> no, but so like, I'm thinking about like, okay, other than like, like the obvious stuff, like, like what about that shit bo bothered me so much? And it's like, one, there's this thing where I feel like older women, especially older white women, are like really allowed to like be creepy. First off, I think everybody is like there we've all been creepy before but it's like i was like looking at like what she's doing and there's like some big buff ass uh bar back that's like it's probably like a, a, a st trying to be a stunt man or something mm -hmm. and she's like take your shirt off and then he points to me like tell him to take his shirt off I'm like hey nigga why the fuck you picking on me just because you getting fucking and <laughs> don't transfer the harassment on the yeah. motherfucker <laughs> like goddamn but i'm like i'm like like okay so there's one this thing like I meet certain people when, like, when like I'm out like at a bar or something, mm -hmm. and I think like, who would you be at a comedy show? And I'm like, I fucking mm. would not. I'm like, yeah. I can see you talking throughout my set and thinking that stand up is a conversation yes. with you as Absolutely. an individual, mm -hmm. which a lot of Portland audiences do. And then coming up to you after the show and be like, you were so great. That was so <laughs> fun. Yeah, for you, not me. <laughs> How did you hear what I said? You were yeah. talking the entire fucking time. <laughs> so. So there's that. And then it's this thing of like, <clears throat> imagine like an old, like a 47 year old black man that's at a place and just going up to like some <laughs> young Asian girl. <laughs> it's like, like 27 years old, UCLA grad student is like, you look good. You look good now. <laughs> man, you are young. You, I, I definitely would if I didn't have something back home. Ooh, I would. Like, yep. It's like, oh, get, get this yeah, guy away be, from me. He'd be in jail. He would be yeah. in jail or at least beat up on the street after getting kicked out. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Some bartender with big tits. Just take your shirt off already. What you doing with that bag on? <laughs> yeah, it, it would be a complete disaster. It'd be a complete mess. Yeah, there's definitely a certain amount of uh, harassment privilege all allotted to the older white female that other people do not get. I mean, people. It happens. It happens at comedy clubs. There's plenty yeah. of times where, like, if somebody like wants to like take a picture after a show or something like that, where yeah, the the older white women get handsy and like will put your arm their arm around you or like their hand on your chest and shit and it's just it's like weird it's like why do you feel entitled to like touch me i saw that with willie barcina it was a bunch of i was doing a show with him and a bunch of like just they're like we're teachers and like ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. and right. it's like what the fuck can y'all do this when y'all was 22 that's a, that's probably another thing that bothers me it's like it's always like older but it's never like a it's never Never like just a 25 year old that's just like, oh, let me feel you. It's like, I mean, women do get hornier the older they get. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, you don't want to join me. I don't, I, I don't know the science behind it. I'll well, take no, your no, they, they, they like sex drive kicks up. Gotcha, gotcha. You know? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, I, I've said all the time uh, that like I get a lot of from older women, like the, you're an old soul with like the hand on the shoulder type of thing in conversation it's just like yeah it don't yeah it's just, it's just don't do that like i don't want to be objectified by someone who like looks like they might have like picked me up from school if my mom had a migraine that day you know <laughs> did, yo here's, here's an interesting thing did your mom have any friends growing up that you wanted to smash no <laughs> Because my mom, my mom's friends were like, their kids were my friends, basically. So it was just like, it, a, it would have been weird, and b, I don't think, I really don't think that I was, I was, ne I've never like been attracted to women like significantly older than me. It's just not, uh, it's just not in my like sexual vocabulary. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it just never, just never had those feelings come across, or like, you know, people are always like, oh, you know, like, what if a teacher was super hot? I never had like a hot teacher, so like, teachers wasn't really hot when we was in school. No, yeah, that was, that was very much a, a, like a Gen X and before, yeah, type of thing. Yeah, we 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 missed that ship sailed for us, I guess. But yeah, I I never had, I never, I've never had like a milf thing. 
I had a friend growing up, and I wanted to have sex with his mom. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like my dick would get hard when his mom <laughs> would come around. But at the same time, she was like a Mexican mom, okay. so she was like much younger. She was oh, like, okay. she was like twenty nine or thirty two or All some right, shit. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, growing up in the suburbs, everyone's mom was like forty by the time that I was in like fifth or sixth grade. So by the time by the time my body was like able to feel feelings, it was like you know, I was I was I was aged out of everyone. Everyone's mom, I guess, was aged out of out of that. But we're having kids. Do you? It, it's interesting you say that. Like like they're all like in their forties. Because I think about like having kids, and I'm like. You gotta have like energy for that shit. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, that's where all the energy goes uh, as a as a parent. Um, you know, and I know a few folks that are like young parents right now, and it's just that's your life now, up until until that kid is probably like eight or nine, and like you know can like make a grilled cheese by itself. <laughs> You're just locked in to just taking care of that thing twenty four seven, unless it's at school or whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, that, like that's like the the idea of that. Like, I just don't want to like, cause I'm somebody like I just like to go somewhere. Yeah, like I'm like, all right, out of relationship. All right, let me get out of New York for a second. All right, fuck it, let's let me post up in LA. Like, yeah, if I have a kid, like if I go through that same breakup, it's like, all right, well I gotta figure out how I'm gonna see Junior, and then mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, I'm a black dad, so I gotta say Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a black sitcom dad. <laughs> junior, what's that? <laughs> what's that in your hand, Junior? <laughs> Uh, so, but like the idea of I can't just do whatever the fuck I want whenever the fuck I want, mm-hmm. like that's really scary to me. Sure, yeah, there, there's definitely a loss of agency that comes with having a kid. I used to always my running joke until he died was when people would ask, "Oh, are you thinking about having kids or whatever?" It's like, "How old is Larry King?" <laughs> I don't know. It's like, however old he is right now, that's when I'll have my first kid. That's when. When I'm on my way out, I'll bring one in, and that'll be my contribution. But yeah, I, uh, I, I'm already tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired all the time as like a 27 year old. I can't imagine uh, what that's like, dude. Um, I mean, my brother and I have this recurring thing where, because we lived in Pittsburgh for like five years through like middle school, so whenever somebody gets married or has a kid, it becomes like reporting. We have to report it to each other. <laughs> And it's just like, damn, Pittsburgh takes a toll on motherfuckers. <laughs> like, people look rough. Yeah. Rough, man. It's not even like opioids. Like, it's. No, it's just, it's just beer. It's just weight. Just the weight of existing in a, pl- in, in a place. <laughs> and everyone just puts on 50 pounds. And it's like, damn, man. It's like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and act like. The beer right. weight is different. Yeah. Especially, like, I feel like there's a certain kind of, because it's like, like a luxurious buttery pasta weight and cognac weight and just yeah. going out. There's like a, there's a difference between, like, the way Dave Chappelle put on weight. And, like, Dave Chappelle obviously exercises and stuff like that. But you can tell, like, he enjoys, like, a good meal. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't let his workout routine get in the way of, like, enjoying a nice restaurant. But there's a difference between, like, yeah, like a buttery steak type of weight and then just like pounding IPAs after after a nine to six. <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to split these chili fries? I got yeah, some exactly. for the table. Dude, that Applebee's diet, it takes it, it takes souls, man. <laughs> Throw a couple kids in there and you're just done. You're just out for the count. <laughs> I think that and then also with the small towns, even outside of like the 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 bad nutrition and all that. I think there's something just about like this thing of like everybody kind of switches sexual partners. Like I remember yes. I was Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I was doing um facts. A show of, it was like my first time in uh doing a show in Ventura and I was with Clay Newman and we we're like out after the show with like a bunch of people we went to high school with and Clay's like this really sucks man. And I'm like, 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 what's the problem? Clay's like, you know, it's like, I'm like, hey, want to hang out? And they're like, oh, this person fucked this person, this person fucked <laughs> right. that person, and I was in love with them, and oh, my best friend is like, oh god, like, I can't hang out with anybody. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and like, I think there is something that like that can kind of like that can kind of break you. Oh yeah, it would be really weird seeing somebody that like you were in love with at one point 
picking up their kids they had with somebody else. And that was the case in Pittsburgh. In middle school, we had plenty of people where it's like, oh, yeah, there's this person and this person. That guy's mom and this girl's dad dated for three years in high school, but then broke up because she went to U Pitt and he went to Penn State. And it's like everyone's just still there. Everyone's just still in Wexford. Um, and just, yeah, that was so jarring to me, especially as someone like who moved around a bunch as a kid. It was just like, yeah, I don't like have connections in any particular city. And you're saying that like your parents had sex with other people's parents? <laughs> like, damn and you know this at that age it's like oh pittsburgh ghetto is yeah yeah it's, it's like looking at like a, your sixth grade classmate and being like yeah you could be my brother <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be traumatizing to me what are you what are your views on homies sharing skirts there's a code of conduct i guess that needs to take place it's a you have the conversation with you know the per, with the person uh, uh, that I guess uh, was in that relationship first and be like, hey, I kind of like your, you know, your ex-girlfriend or whatever. Can you, uh, can I get the seal of approval? You know? And even, I, honestly, and I on, I say even, it's not just like with friends, even with like acquaintances. If you know a guy or, or a girl um, and you want to like pursue their partner, within like, within like I'd say a year or two, you probably should have a conversation with that person. So I feel like the seal of approval is almost kind of disrespectful because it's like, hey, is it okay? No, that shit ain't cool. It's like, okay. And then she offers some pussy. Like, you take you like, oh, I'm sorry, but I, I, I talk with your ex and you're just not with it. Like, <laughs> he's like, no, you're going to do it. Like, uh, that's true. I think, I think it depends on the person. I, I think that if a that's friend fair. of mine, I think if a friend of mine was like, hey, do not, you know, please do not, <laughs> please do not try to sleep with the person who broke my heart. Uh, I would probably, I would, I would probably respect that. I think. Um, yeah, because like, what's the point of having friends if you're gonna like do some shit like that? True, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and it's like, what's more important, uh, 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 the friendship that you have with that person or this opportunity to like hook up with somebody, right? Um, I guess if you've like have developed some sort of actual feelings, then that's it, there's a difference for conversation between like, hey, I'd like to like date this person that you used to go out with, and. I would like to have sex with this person he used to go out with, you know? Those are two different states of being. Um, and I, th I, I think if it's like the, I wanna date this person, most people are probably gonna be cool about it and be like, yeah, man, fine. But if you're like, yo, she's just, the she or you or he or whatever is just like offering sex. I would, if I was in that situation where someone was like, hey, can I fuck your ex-girlfriend? I'd be like, Take take them to dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> this is not some standards. God damn. There, there is a part of that where it's it's like it's like, okay, yeah, I may have ran that ass into the ground, mm -hmm. but despite that, I still want like some respect, even though because I still feel like a part I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's just a weird Yeah. It just is what it is. It's it's also like it's also like this idea of like, dang, like this person that like I wine and dine and went to their parents' house and was really in love, then the homie just go, then the homie sees it and he's like, yeah, I just fucked a bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show the same respect that I did, God damn it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Since you've had, you know, you, you've had yourself some sex. Um, some would say. Yeah, can I ask you your body count on there? It's like six, I think. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah cause you like, you, your generation, like you don't like be running through chicks like that. Uh, I mean, talk to talk to some other people and they might disagree. Okay, I mean, all right. I, yeah. I'll just say all my homies born from like 93, 94 to like 96. Like they mm -hmm. just kind of like, I just had girlfriends and, you know. Yeah, I think we are a little bit more of a relationship -y, but then you have just like dirty dicked men like my brother uh, yeah. who are, <laughs> he goes to get like a checkup. They're like, how many, how many partners do you have? He's like, I don't know. He's like, give me like an estimate. And he and he just draws the infinity logo on a on a whiteboard and like okay we're gonna test you for everything. <laughs> Sean works in radio, like you know he's a whore. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly. Radio niggas are sluts. Yeah, like, they fucking one hundred percent. Yeah, Sean is a bimbo. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Hi, Sean. I know you're listening. What up, Sean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the coon. You whore. <laughs> so. 
Okay, like, let me ask you this. Like, is there a scenario, are, are there any women that you've had sex with where if they came around and they're like, hey, so I lie on the pod, blah, 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 whatever, you'd be okay with me having sex with them? Or are we too close for that? I'm not trying to have sex with anyone of you guys. Yeah, you know, I, like, I, I'm aware. It's for the sake of content. Yeah, I, I wanted to give, you know, a proper amount of thought to the hypothetical. Yes. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's a good question. I, I feel like I feel like we might be too close of friends. Yeah, I, for I, that I mean, to I be. couldn't do it, but I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, where, where, where are you at with that? Yeah, I would, I, I think, I think I would have to, I'd have to be like, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, yeah, I think, I think we're, I think we've, uh, Okay, okay, like, let's. I think like, we've recorded too many podcasts together for that to be the case. This is very intimate. All right. Let's take me out the equation. Let's say, right. like, a homie that you see from, like, a homie that you hoop with, and then occasionally, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, we grab drinks after, like, grab a mm -hmm. beer, watch a game. Yeah. Like, it, even like, like an acquaintance homie, like, is there, is there anybody in your body count where you're like, all right, you can. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely people within that, the confines of that, where it's just like, yeah, do whatever you want. It's like, you know not particularly and we just still be friends yeah yeah absolutely and i guess there also has to be something to be said about like you know if that person does if that if that person that you used to be partners with wants to do something with somebody i don't know if it's you kind of have to think of it on the flip side of like is it necessarily our is it my place to be like no you can't do that we broke up so they're technically free to do whatever they want um but i guess with those types of situations you're looking at you're not so much looking at, at it of like giving the ex-partner permission to do something as much as you're looking at it as like trying to like maintain a friendship um and so i guess you yeah you have to decide for yourself well is this friendship worth maintaining if i feel like i'm gonna get bothered by that situation but i want to give credence to like people should at the end of the day be able to do whatever you want but if your friend wants your permission then they want your permission you know I have probably only like three women I'd be like not want niggas to go because I've had two girlfriends and one woman where I'm like, oh God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> like she wasn't a girlfriend, but it's mm. like she feels like a very special pupil. Like it's very like gotcha. <laughs> oh, those are good times. And then and it's just like yes, yeah, no girlfriends and no none of that. And then. Do your thing, mm. but, yeah, yeah, um, totally. But the other thing is, oh well, no. And then there are a few girls like I don't want like anybody I know to smash just because I'm like, y'all gonna be talking about me, and I don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rumor mill. Yeah, like like I don't I don't I don't want that shit. Yeah, you're visualizing the pillow talk, and you're just like I don't want my name brought up in this in the confines of this of this intimacy. It was funny. Yeah. I, I recently. Has, has sex with with a woman, and uh, congratulations. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't bragging. I'm just. This has to do with what you said. <laughs> and it was funny. Like like after we had sex, we're talking, and then I'm like, and like I'm I'm like, like after I have sex with somebody for the first time, I'm like real happy, and I'm just like, hey, it's like, <laughs> it's like I, I'm not lighting a cigarette, but I'm lighting a cigarette. Right. And I said to her like, you know, I really like pillow talk, and then she's like, you mean talking. I'm like, no, this is pillow talk. We fucked, and then now we're talking. She's like, you mean talking? <laughs> so I was like, no. <laughs> There's a specific situation, series of events that have to occur in order for me to open up discussion. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. And then, it, okay, so we're talking about, like, if you have an ex that's down for that. It's funny, man, because I was like, and I got this thing where I'm like, I'm a little paranoid right now because the ex likes going to comedy shows. And the ex is really on some spiteful shit. You see where mm. I'm going with this? Sure, sure. That's something that's like in my mind. Like, if she, I mean, it's also like, it's also like, nigga, you so fragile. What a woman does with her body would break you. Man up, nigga. Mm. <laughs> At the same time, it's like, like my head's going down like all the bad places this can go and just like she a yeah. blabber mouth and just know if someone's I... doing something to hurt your feelings then it's not necessarily like a, oh you gotta like you know brush that shit off because if, if you know that it's if you know that it's spiteful then that's the reaction they're trying to elicit and you know you can't really help it if someone's intentionally trying to hurt you in that way um 
definitely something to be said of like, yeah, who gives a fuck if you like, you know, broke up with somebody 12 years, you know, uh, 12, oh, yeah. 12 years is an extreme example, but like, you know, I, I guess the way that I see it is like, if I, if I've been out of a relationship, a situation ship or a hookup, whatever, uh, uh, if it's been like a year, it's like truly like get, I'd say in that situation, truly get the fuck over it. I think there's a certain amount of time for me that like would pass. It's like, yeah, people should be able to do whatever they want unless like you want to like, you know, uh, 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 go out with like, I guess someone who's like a very intimate friend of mine, uh, in which case I'd be like, yeah, is this spiteful? Is this, is this some type of revenge attempt or something like that? <coughs> But yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you should feel bad for having your feelings. Uh, it's a hypothetical, so like, yeah. also, like, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but if something like that did happen, you'd be perfectly entitled to feel upset and hurt by that. I think. I like ran this by the homie, and he was like, "Yeah, it sucks. If it happens, but at the same time, it's like, if she wants to act like a hoe from Salinas, that's not your problem." <laughs> Salinas. Uh, that is small town shit. You yeah, know yeah, it's a little inside baseball, but I think yeah. I think people I think people understand. So we got a lot of California listeners. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, people are gonna do what they're gonna do, but if they're doing something intentionally spiteful, then that's uh, that's gonna have an effect one way or another, you know. So NBA. <laughs> Like, Basketball. I, I don't know how to segue out of that. I was are, like, I, I can like keep going more and more, but it's like we're we're gonna have some more misogynist musings later in the day. Yeah, this <laughs> is going. This is gonna be a very Drake podcast. Ex girlfriends and basketball. <laughs> 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 but yes, the NBA. So right now we have Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. Andrew Wiggins. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Isaac, I want to say. Yeah, I think Jonathan Isaac, uh, Michael Porter. Michael Porter, who are not vaccinated, and therefore, and it's really a bitch for Kyrie and uh, Andrew Wiggins because New York and San Francisco are the two places where, like, you can't get in a facility yeah. due to if you're not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And the NBA straight up said if you're not vaccinated and you're playing in those cities and you can't get into the stadium, you void your paycheck. Like, they will not pay you for that game. If this happens in David Stern's league, what do you think happens? Oh, David Stern is – David Stern would 100% have a, a – enforce a mandate. I think he would 100% have a vaccination mandate. He'd be like, fuck you and your little union, Chris Paul. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. Speaking of Chris Paul, yeah. <laughs> it was like, you're not going – you're not going to the Lakers if he's willing to uh, disrupt – the balance of the league uh, for basketball reasons, I think he would enforce a vaccine for basketball reasons as well. Yeah, Stern, Stern was an iron fist. Yeah. He really was. Um, yeah, he took no shit from the players. He really didn't, which, you know, has its good and its bad qualities to it. But, yeah, he would, he would have had a vaccine mandate months ago. Yeah, I've, and and Adam Silver's like the company retreat. Let's all hold a feather and yeah, ex mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, David Stern would have forced people to like do commercials, <laughs> telling them to get vaccinated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're doing this commercial. You're gonna tell them the vaccine. It's wonderful. You'll feel great. Yeah, he, <laughs> he treated he treated the league like it was his like it was his baby. He wanted to see that thing grow, man. So, yeah, definitely two different approaches between him and Silver. Yeah. So, well, those guys not not getting vaccinated. Well, first off, like if if you're on the nets and you're, like you're a hooper, so I'm asking you this: it, What do you think like it is in the locker room with guys like KD and Harden, if, like towards Kyrie? It's like, dude, you're gonna miss half the home games because like you don't want to get vaccinated. Like, or is it just, or is it kind of like the way it is in the black community where it's like, yeah, I'm vaccinated, the homie ain't, but that's his choice, whatever. Like, niggas gonna do what they gonna do. I think most guys are leaning that way right now. Okay. The latter of like, yeah, do what you're gonna do. When it starts costing games and seating, it's yeah. gonna, people are gonna start to get mad about it. And whether that anger is gonna be directed at the players or be directed at the league, I guess remains to be seen, but I, def I I think that, I mean, you know, personally, I'm just like, get the shot, asshole. 
but I think a lot of those guys are looking at it like, yeah, do whatever right now. But when it starts, when it starts costing games and paychecks, that's when folks are going to be like, oh shit, maybe we should have pressured this guy a little bit more uh, to get his shit together. You know, it's e- it's easy to lay back now when like all you got is like training camp and shit. You know, hooping with J. Cole. It's like, who cares if you're vaccinated? <laughs> As he pulls up from three. Yeah, but when you got to roll into when you got to roll into the into the Warriors when they've got Clay back, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yo, imagine, imagine, imagine if somebody missed like a play-in game for the playoffs because Ooh. they weren't vaccinated. You know what I mean? Like, you can't. I, I personally, I don't think it, I would be incapable of being anything but resentful if I if my team lost a game because a key player missed the play in because they weren't vaccinated. So it's gonna get real in a little bit for these guys. Kyrie though, I feel like he's in a space where I feel like Andrew Wiggins will be like, all right, I want my game checks. We actually have a shot. And then mm. uh, Draymond, like I can picture Draymond like, you need to get the shot, Andrew. Like we need to fucking like, I, I can picture Dre like just really like laying into him at some point, if, yeah. if not already. And Steve, Steve Kerr, like he broke a clipboard. Like I know Steve got- Steve Yeah, got Steve, Steve will get my, well, Draymond already said uh, about Wiggins like, hey man, you know, do, uh, do you. But like I said, that's an easy position to take right now because there's really not many stakes involved. Um, yeah, Kyrie is just like Kyrie is like a step below a hotep. You know what I mean? Where like is he like just too rich to be a hotep? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. So it's like he's like <laughs> anyone to Duke. It's like, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He's just he, he's he's too I guess privileged at this point to be a full blown <laughs> to be a full blown hotep. But like that's. His angle is a little bit different than everybody else's because he think Kyrie Kyrie is the same as like Joe Rogan where he thinks that he's like outsmarted the vaccine and the scientists. You know what I mean? I think everybody else is kind Smart of just dumb nigga. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where it's just like, yeah, you know, he's definitely a, I did my own research type of person. Uh, Wiggins was trying to invoke a religious exception. Uh, exception. Well, we know he did that like in the way where like. Niggas between they Jewish in prison to right, like get right. better meals. <laughs> yeah. like, right, maybe if I do this. Very true. Very true. Yeah, I think a lot of other guys just don't want to get it. But like, I think Kyrie legitimately believes that he has found he's cracked the code of like why this shouldn't, why he shouldn't have to get it. You know, Kyrie is like really funny to me as a person because he's like Kyrie reminds me of like a Berkeley nigga. Sure. Where it's like, all right, he hoops. He's athletic. He could skate. He, there's like a sort of like natural charisma that he has. Mm-hmm. But then it's like you like you get to hear him talk. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about with the, this, the flat earth trolling? Yeah, he has all the attributes to be the face of the NBA. But his 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 thinking that he's smarter than he is is just like it, it, it ruins his chances of being that. Yeah, and I, I don't think he would want to like be that like, if, if he could. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I, I don't think it mends with his personality as is. But you put those attributes on another person, and it's kind of a pretty easy, uh, it's a pretty easy spot for them to take. But yeah, he's just he's just too, uh, he's too dumb smart for his own good. <laughs> How much do you think the fact that he's also like a skater has to do with it? Because like I think skaters have this sort of relation, this real disconnect with life, mm-hmm. where it's I don't know if we would call it was it nihilism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nihilism. Nihilism. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's why we need a college nigga here. <laughs> <UCSB. laughs> like a- research institution. <laughs> I did my research <laughs> in history. Uh, you may not ha- have an expensive sexual vocabulary, but you got an expensive vocabulary. Exactly. That's exactly. why you're here. One hundred percent. That's what I bring to the table is some well-researched <laughs> history papers. So. But yeah, I, th- I think like 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 with, with skater niggas, there's like a certain sort of like, eh, like, like life is just whatever. And I, I think like even like just like really being a skating, I'm, and I'm not hating on skating because like I tried skating when Tony Hawk Pro Skater came out. Oh, everyone was, did. Yeah. Who do who who did not? You know. I was so put like I went down a half pipe correctly one time. I was so pussy. It was like a half ramp. I'm like, I was too scared to like get hurt and shit. Like, right, right, right. It, it wasn't for me. But I feel like. 
if you're willing to like just get on a board and like jump over some shit and mm-hmm. like you're like, yeah, this is a good idea. Let me keep doing it. Oh, it hurt. <laughs> Let me do it again. Right. Like you got to kind of like, eh, whatever, mm-hmm. like attitude about shit. At the same time, I feel like you could convince a skater to get the vaccine. If you're like, if you like, were like, hey, man, it would really mean a lot to us and the rest of the crew if you just like went and got the shot. I know it's like not your thing and you like don't necessarily, but like for everyone else, it would really be tubular of you to do that. Be like, All Dude, right. like, don't be a dick, Brayden. Yeah. Just like fucking get it. Okay, Bryce got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you'd be like, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough, dude. Sorry if I was messing with the vibes, man. Yeah, like, get exactly. It. Now we can all grab some Zaw together. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you could vibe check Kyrie Irving into getting the vaccine. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, because like when you're like just so rich at a certain point, mm-hmm. like you do, kind of like transcend like race class. It's just like you're in like this rich bubble. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, so I. I, I I think we have to wait. Until, I think you're going to have to wait and see until the season starts to get the fallout of it. Michael Porter, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. You just got $200 million, and you're going to – I would get a shot for – if someone was like, we'll give you $20 to get the vaccine, I would do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I have – I will sell my body. Uh, <laughs> but, like, if all that's keeping me from, like, a guaranteed max contract – that I don't deserve because I'm not worth a max contract is a shot. I'm getting the shot, especially he's, he's had it. He got COVID twice. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Like, you don't know, like third time's a charm. Like you don't know he, what that is. He's like super do. Christian though, right? Is yeah. Yeah. Doing? He's hyper religious. Um, so I think I, he might be a Jehovah's witness. I'm not sure. I see like, like a bunch of like NBA Wikipedia, like the personal life section is is a devout Christian, <laughs> right? Yeah, is it yeah. really? Is it right, and that's the thing is like when people like try to claim some sort of like religious exemption or like moral high ground in like professional sports, it's like, but we know you got a side chick, mm-hmm. and that's in the Bible. <laughs> like that you're not supposed to do that. There's nothing about whether or not to get a shot, you know. So it's it's just. Did you I hear th- about the Michael Porter sex tape? I did not. A video leaked of a girl, of uh, it might have been his girlfriend, but of him getting his dick sucked. Didn't that happen to Jamal Murray too? I don't know. The Nuggets really gotta keep it locked in. Yeah. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's just an overflow of seeing. I, I do not want to see Nikola Jokic, Jokic getting his dick sucked. That would be terrifying. <laughs> he he would make like ogre noises. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Nikola oh. Jokic to me looks like a guy who would sound like he's about to come the entire time he's having sex. <laughs> it was some like Tony Soprano breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. He's a Tony Soprano type of lover, I would say certainly. But yeah, lock it in, Denver. What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Everyone's too high there. They legalize too quickly, and they're just not paying attention. Put those phones away. Did you? Uh... Did you hear the story about the the chick? She went on Adam Twenty Two, the No Jumper podcast, mm. and she's she's like escort chick, only fans girl, something like that. Okay. And she said she gave seven players on the Phoenix Suns head, like at the, like like she sucked them all off in rapid succession, or just like throughout a season. <laughs> I think like they were in a hotel room, and she just like got it popping with seven okay. other guys on the team. Gotcha. And it was funny because it's like, oh shit! And then they they make a final, they make a they have a deep postseason run, mm. and I'm like, <laughs> do you think Devin Booker was in on that? Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about the Suns. I feel yeah, Chris Paul probably wasn't. Chris Paul doesn't strike me as like a group environment. No, no, no. Chris, Chris Paul. Chris, yeah. It would have the, it was it was the younger guys in the team for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron Payne, all those. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, the the young center? What was uh, Aiton? DeAndre Aiton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... He was probably he 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 was probably the one who who coordinated. <laughs> like yo guys, come. the rookie coordinated it. Yeah, yeah. He was like everyone, everyone. Oh, that could have been rookie duties. They're like, hey, go, all right, bring her up. Well, they were. Was that this season? Because I think so. Okay, yeah. Aiton's been in the league for a little bit though. 
they have the they have Aiton who's starting, and then they have they have another guy who's. Pretty it, it, it was when they made the finals run, and then I just remember people going like on some of like the. the yeah, NBA yeah. Memes. So yeah, so Aiton yeah. Aiton was drafted in like 18, 2018, I think. Okay. So. Wouldn't have been rookie. Maybe it would have been rookie duties. Maybe that is part of it. I mean, you know, I know the Spurs rookies have to bring donuts to practice. Maybe you have to bring an escort if you're on the sun. <laughs> and then and then you're like, all right, you get sucked off last. And, <laughs> and then you got to kiss her. Right, <laughs> right. That's, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I, did I go too far? I think that, I went too far. That was, that was maybe a step over. <laughs> we, we had like a whole like – we just did a section on NBA players and their dicks. <laughs> like, I don't know how we get out of this. Well, speaking of that, okay, I got to say this. I saw this, like, and it was, like, one of the funniest things to me. It was um when Draymond Green, remember, he, he like, Snapchatted his dick or whatever? Yes, that was very, on the on the Team USA airplane. <laughs> oh, he did it on the airplane? Yeah, he went to the bathroom on the airplane, took a picture of his dick and meant to send it to a girl and then put it on his story and then walked back and sat down. It's like, uh, dude, your fucking dick is on your Snapchat. I saw him on um, ESP and he's doing like a, like one of those E60s or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, what happened with the Snapchat thing? It was honestly just a mistake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Draymond is like such an Oakland nigga, even though yeah. he's Michigan. Yeah, he really he 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 did the Allen Iverson thing, where even if you're not from that city, you embody that city. You know, he's yeah, he's Oakland through and through, the same way AI was Philly through and through. Did Jordan do that for Chicago, or is Jordan just? Oh, well, Jordan's a country nigga, and Chicago nigga's a country. Yeah, I think I think he mended well. I think that he might have been too much of an icon. I think no matter where he ended up, it would have been that situation. Um, if, if no matter where he went and they won, he would have been the face of you know that city or whatever. Defat. If Michael Jordan wasn't didn't embody Chicago, Chicago embodied Jordan. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, people from the Midwest like they love talking about like I. Well, I have a Midwest work ethic. Yeah, and yeah. I think having sure. Jordan like just definitely, definitely. I'm glad you brought that up because now, all right, I want to do like a, a rapid fire. Like, I mean, take your time answering, but I want to ask you certain players and see if you think they embody the city. Okay. Kobe Bryant, Los Angeles. Yes. Magic Johnson. Yes. Shaq in Orlando. No. Shaq in LA. Yes. Shaq in Miami. Shaq in Miami, he would have had he stayed longer. Okay. Patrick Ewing in New York. People have turned on Patrick Ewing. His legacy is like not age well, right? People have re I mean, I've always been a Patrick Ewing denier <laughs> personally. So it, it tickles me to see that people are realizing, yeah, this guy wasn't as good as he used to be. I think in the time that he was playing, he he did, but um I think in retrospect people are kind of revoking that status from him. He did make two finals though. It's like he sh they should have they should have won one. They really should have had a title. Should have been the in San Antonio run. one, I feel like, because I yeah. mean, Lajuan was like just too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he really, they really should have, uh, should they should have made it past Chicago once. Yeah. James Harden in Houston. No. He, I, I I don't know enough about Houston. I'd say I guess I don't know. I, maybe I don't know how how big is how big is like club culture in Houston. Strip club culture is real big out there. Okay, then he, then he did. Then he definitely did. <laughs> then there's your answer. Yeah, a hundred percent. Then. What about? I, I'm, I'm Wally Zerbiak in Minnesota. Absolutely. Oh, of course. A hundred percent. Zerbiak with the name, they probably thought he was like janitorial or something. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, what about um I I, I want to try to think. Okay, here is an is an easy one. Tim Duncan San Antonio. I don't know shit about San Antonio. I think that that's a situation where the city adapted to him. Okay. I think that I think the city began to embody what Tim Duncan brought. Any other players that you feel like you're like, "Yo, you are that." Cuz like I feel like Dominique Wilkins was like the perfect guy for Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. It's like dunking in Atlanta is like, it, it's Atlanta's kind of like black San Francisco where it's like sure. hyper sexual and <laughs> there's like a gay community out there and I don't know. 
<laughs> there's niggas got money. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, like sure. Everybody in SF got money. Everybody in Atlanta got money. It's mm. like you know, fair. And fair. I and I think like having a guy. Okay, you know, I feel like Steph Curry's game really is for present day Bay Area because yes. it's like it's a bunch of threes. It's, it's like it's San Francisco. Yeah, uh, he, yeah. His uh, his game is definitely San Francisco. If there was. Uh, if there was a team in San Diego, Clay Thompson would be perfect for it. Yeah. Clay Thompson is a San Diego dude. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. For yeah. What about what about what Toronto? You guys that embody that. So Vince Carter was Vince Carter and Vince Carter actually I think what I think is probably the biggest example of a city adapting to a player. Uh, not only in just like his game, but like he like started bars and nightclubs out there. He was a kind of an integral part of Toronto, kind of yeah. becoming a very uh, cultured, like great tourist city. Um, so I, I saw think, that in the documentary, The Carter Effect. That's a great documentary. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's another example. I think that's an example of a city adapting to a player, and also a player making the culture. Um, on it, uh, in, in his own efforts, um, so I don't I don't think there's anybody who, since then, has truly embodied maybe Toronto, um, but I think Vince Carter I think Vince Carter probably more so Vince Carter had a biggest hand had the biggest hand in forming city's identity I think out of any NBA player. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I will say I think with the Warriors and like. From 2015 to like mm. 2019, I think that was a case of like, okay, tech and the city's like mm. coming up financially. Like it's coming down culturally and all mm. other ways, but it's like it's it's coming up in a certain way where it's like newer buildings, you got Twitter and all that, mm -hmm. and then and it's like and then like hey metrics analytics, and then mm -hmm. it's like you see all the places where Steph shoots from and like just on the screen before the game and somebody that like doesn't know NBA doesn't know basketball, but they know how to like oh yeah that's a spreadsheet I get it. Right. And I feel like that worked. But, yeah, Vince Carter. Yo, let me ask you this with Vince Carter. If Vince Carter doesn't go to Toronto and he's, he actually plays in Oakland, like he's, like he's drafted by Golden State, I, I believe, is Drake the same way if we don't get Vince Carter? No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, no. I, I, like I said, uh, that explosion of those Raptors teams uh, – had a profound impact on that city. I, I don't think so. I mean, you got Jalen out there too, because I yeah. remember Dr like Jalen Rose being like, "I would see Drake around town. Yeah, we'd be at the restaurants, at the lounges." <laughs> he really does have that specific <laughs> mannerism of speaking. Yeah. Um, I mean, Drake would have been Drake, um, and pro I guess probably would have been the guy to do what Vince Carter did, probably. Um, but I, I yeah, I think I think. And I, I think if you ask Drake, he'd be like, yeah, Vince Carter kind of helped make the city and by that factor, me, who I am. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would be the same. <laughs> Nothing was ever the same. I, I, I like that. <laughs> I do think there is a thing when, like, you can actually see some popping shit in your city and your city's never been popping, mm -hmm. where it's like, like, okay, I could, I could be stretching here, but I heard Seth Rogen, Seth Rogen was like, yeah, I just... Like growing up in Vancouver, it sucked, and <laughs> like, and now like I don't he. I, point is, if Seth Rogen went back, started a movie studio, and like a bunch of movies, like let's say, like let's say super bad, they like they actually filmed it in Vancouver and set it in Canada and throw mm -hmm. in some Canada culture, instead, like, is Vancouver then kind of more of a hot spot? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I think that uh, I think that celebrities definitely have the opportunity to put the places that they're from on the map, no doubt about it. Um, I was just thinking more about um, players who uh, embodied the city. I mean, the entire, and we kind of, we kind of covered it in our, in our Malice of the Palace, the entire, that entire Pistons team and, yeah. uh, embodied the city of Detroit and adapted to that culture. On the flip side, I don't really think that Reggie Miller is particularly Indiana, Indianapolis. Obviously, Bird I think is, I think yeah I think he was just a really good player that they loved, but I don't think he embodied the city in this in the same way that those other guys that we mentioned.
what city do you think like if Reggie's legacy would have been better at? Because if, if he matched it playing um, style and yeah, let me. We talked a lot of shit. Yeah, we do. We talked a lot of shit about right, which is honestly merited. I think he's the same as Patrick Ewing, where the you kind of look back and like, was this guy actually as good as he was being made out to be? He was obviously great and like a Hall of Famer, but I agree know. with that. But he just he wasn't. If they they're gonna come out with the NBA like seventy five or whatever, uh, like they're gonna do another top seventy five, and yeah. they're gonna act like Reggie Miller was a, is a complete lock, and like people, pe- I, he might even be in the top fifty when they did the top fifty. I'm not sure. Can, can you pull it up? Can, yeah, can you do an NBA fifty seventy five list and like talk about who gets off and who gets on? So who get, who gets on that was not on it, right? Because they did the they did it in like ninety six. Yeah. So, who definitely gets on? Kobe, obviously. Kobe, Jason LeBron. Kidd, Chris Paul, LeBron, yeah. Wade. Um, there's there's going to be other people that were... Some people are going to have to get kicked off. Yeah, Curry, Durant. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some people who are going to fall off for sure. Curry, does, Kawhi, does Kawhi Leonard get on there? Will says Kawhi's the greatest role player of all time. I get what he's saying. I think, and like, sure, he'll be on the list. He'll okay. be on the list whether it's merited or not. And even if it's unmerited now, if he stays healthy, it'll be merited in a couple. Of, I, it's hard to argue with a guy who like single handedly won a city a championship and then um, left. Yeah, and then was like, "See you the fuck later." All right, fifty greatest players. Nate Archibald is probably going to fall off. Definitely. Dave Bing is going to fall off. Um, I don't know who Billy Cunningham is. Um. They don't make Cunninghams anymore. No, Cunningham is a expired last name. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody with like an expired like, uh, yeah, you're gonna see a, you're gonna see North a lot Atlantic of, name like yeah. we're, this is gonna fuck. A lot of guys from old, uh, these older guys who played in like the 50s and 60s are gonna go. Lenny Wilkins is probably gonna fall off, even though he probably shouldn't, because he was a great player. But I doubt that he Man, makes coach. it into the yeah. Um, Yo, you know, I thought that nigga was Chinese for the longest. I just felt like I remember it was like years ago. I was shocked when I found out like, oh, Lenny Wilkins just it's half just a black, black and Irish yeah, yeah. like you. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I thought that nigga was Chinese. No, no, just uh, just another just another mix, dude. The, yeah, the the uh, the Irish gene seems to really throw a wrench into the genetics. Yeah, like, yeah you like a, Italian and Jewish. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I from... don't look I don't look half black, half Irish. Yeah. Uh, Derek Jeter looks like a Muppet. I mean, I look like a Muppet too, but Derek Jeter doesn't look Irish uh, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but he's the same thing. Yeah, I think you're just going to lose a lot of these older guys. I mean, I don't want to, like, say stuff about people that I know nothing about, like Paul, uh, a reason. Uh, Does Yao Ming make it? Ooh, that's a great question. I'd put him in. If I was voting, yeah, he's in there. I think the cultural impact is too great, and he w- and he was legitimately a top three center when he played. He, I mean, Yao Ming. I was watching Yao Ming highlights the other day on YouTube. I'm like, ooh, bad motherfucker. Yeah, he was. He he had one of the best finesse games. Just he was so skilled, so skilled. Yeah, Yao Ming definitely gets in. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of interesting. Like Paul Pierce will will be in there. Ray Allen, yeah. Kevin Garnett. Ray uh, Allen's going to make it. I'm not against it. I'm just like, okay. yeah, see, I'm second all time. I'm, in threes I'm, I'm or wearing Ray Allen Jordans right now. But it, right, right. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I fuck with. He got game is one of my favorite movies. But oh yeah, that, that's an all time classic. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who makes it in. But yeah, definitely some obvious folks like Kid and those people that I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, kids. Gonna Does Tony it. Parker make it? I say no. No. Yeah, I think I think if you expanded it to maybe like a hundred, I'd think about it. But I think I think he gets omitted. Did he get a finals MVP? He might have one. He might. I feel no, like I, th- got- I think it's I think it might be all Duncan. I think I think it's I think it's Duncan, 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 and Duncan and Kawhi. Yeah, I think it's. I, I'm not sure though. Um, either, either either way, like yeah, I, I mean it's like it, it's definitely gonna be Duncan. Duncan's definitely gonna be in there, and it's like, but it's like those Spurs yeah. teams are so good. I feel like somebody's gonna want to slip in. I feel like we're gonna get a wild card one too, where we're like Ginobili made it. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. People are like, no, you don't understand like how advanced Ginobili was for like right. the time. Ahead exactly, of the time. exactly. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, there's a lot of 
mo more modern guys that are kind of on the fringe. Vince Carter definitely, obviously, is going to make it 100%. You think so? I think because I think he's like top 10 points all time just by virtue of how long he played. Yeah, but I mean, it was like. And it, recency bias. In 50 yeah. years, Vince Carter might fall off that list. You know, you know oh, when they do it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's going to just by nature of him having played more recently, he'll get in. Um, and then you, you might lose some guys um, who played in like the 90s, 2000s era who were like legitimately great players who maybe had they redone the list in like 2008 or something like that would have gotten a look. Um, you know, we'll see what they do. There's going to be four or five guys where we're going to be like, why are they in? And then there's going to be another 10 guys who are like, well, what about putting them in? And then you have to make room for them. Um, and it, it will, we'll get plenty of Stephen yeah, A. takes. Yeah. Do you mean to tell me? Like, yeah. Uh, Chris Mullen is a bubble guy. Yeah, he could. Uh. I feel like because he led the dream team in points, he kind of I, I would vote for him. He's 74, but I would vote for him. Chris Mullen's 74? No, I mean like if on the top seventy-five oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. list. Okay, he's, he like, would, he's like right. He's yeah, like he'd right be right on the edge, but I would I would give him the nod. He, but he, I I don't know. I don't know if he gets in. I don't know if if he'll get the look because again, one of those guys who was like a very good player during when they first made the list, but is so far removed from his career. You know what I mean? I I like all the different turns we took this episode. We got yeah. <laughs> we got we got Hall and Oates. We got. Lyle's paranoia <laughs> over over what his ex girlfriend might or might not mm -hmm. do. Anti vax players. Anti vax players. And the seventy five. And NBA players and, and they dicks. And yep. <laughs> okay. A lot and of Snapchat. NBA dicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, speaking of what you, you know, LeBron knows. <laughs> and Space Jam too. You pause at this frame. Oh, by, by the way, before we go. Could you please uh, get off your Space Jam take you said earlier? Yeah, yeah. So Space Jam 2, I mean, you know, it's been out. People have seen it. It's funny because um, people people hold the first Space Jam in this very high reverence. And, like, yeah, it was a fun movie, and I loved it as a kid. You watch it. I watched it with somebody a couple of years ago who hadn't seen it and didn't grow up with it. And I was like, oh, no, oh wait, this movie sucks. <laughs> like, if you have it, like, I could see in their face, like, it's just one of those things you had to grow up with it for you to think it's great, but everyone grew up with it already. It's like age. McDonald's. It's like, you know. Oh, McDonald's is great no matter. If you don't like McDonald's, you <laughs> go fuck yourself. What are you doing? They they put chemicals in it to make it addicting. Like, it's good. No, it's good from that standpoint, but it's like, I'm like, like I like duck now. Like, sure. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you definitely. So, if you have not yet grown out of Space Jam being your favorite movie, you need to see counseling. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll so, still watch Space Jam and be like, yeah. oh, yeah. So a lot of people went into the second one with the, oh, I hate, uh, with the, it's not going to be as good as the first one. And, you know, that's their hypothesis. It was just as bad of a movie as uh, the first one. And by nature of that, just as good. Uh, but it's funny because Michael Jordan, you could tell that they went into making that movie like, oh, my God, Michael Jordan could not act to save his life. We found the thing that this guy just will never be able to do no matter how much he practices in his basement by himself. Uh, this is not ping pong. Um so they gave him very little to work with so that it was just like, yeah, he's terrible, but he says five things the whole movie. With the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to help you win a basketball game. You have to get my shorts. Um, <laughs> but with LeBron, because he showed chops in uh, Trainwreck, they gave him too much in this one. Because it's like, oh, LeBron James can act a little bit, so we're going to actually give him character depth and an arc and he just doesn't have this he doesn't have the chops to uphold that so he he looks worse than he should have they kind of did him dirty with just giving him too much to do but I, it's still a fun movie but yeah they definitely they definitely stretched him out too thin in the trailer i felt him going for it with the expressions i'm like okay you're planning like when you retire in like 2024 you're yeah. planning to like do some action movie, right? Like, exactly. It's you know, the only ex athletes that like make the smooth transition and like already have a basis are the ex wrestlers, because they're already acting. You know, they they work on they work in a soap opera, so they have the experience already. Most pro athletes, it just goes really bad. Did you see Rick Fox on Oz? 
No, I only saw Rick Fox in holes. <laughs> That's my. <laughs> okay, okay. Rick Fox and Oz, he plays a basketball player that, and, and like the funniest thing is like, like it's in prison. They're like, you scored 57 points against Michael Jordan and the Bulls? It's like, he would never. Like, <laughs> yeah, just shut the fuck up. You, and you know that he told them, like, hey, can we like put a thing in there that I was like, <laughs> Great about just to piss you. off Michael. Yeah, exactly. Just to get a ribbon. Rick Fox. Rick Fox is like that. He has too many hobbies. Because he did that, and now he's into like esports. It's like you're not good at any of these things. I know, but he's 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 like very handsome. So it's like yeah. So he gets to do. He gets if you're handsome enough, you get to be a successful entrepreneur. Yeah, like and it's just like oh let's I, let's have this nigga with like kind of white man hair. <laughs> This this black Pat Riley. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, dude. Boom. Good close. We love it.